We live in a, a beautiful area of, of the world, not just of New York State or the country. One of the things that gets said a lot around here is, trust me, which uh, has come to mean, certainly don't trust me. Uh, when John, my assistant winemaker, who's been here in over 10 years, was new, John's not a man that's really tall. He's about five and a half feet tall, short Italian guy, really rugged. And uh, I, he put on the hip waders, and I told him to jump in these bins and stomp down these grapes to liberate some juice. And he says, but won't I just sink to the bottom? And I said, no. Trust me. So John jumps up, gets in the bin, and poof, straight out of the bottom, up to here in grapes. A lot of people say, how the heck did you ever come up with the name Red Cat? Basically, uh, Cat is short for Catawba, and that's the the, uh, the main grape that goes into Red Cat. And uh, we had a hard time convincing my dad. It was a, he was a little bit crazy. He wanted to call it Road Apple Red. I don't know if you know what road apples are, but um, if you ever followed a horse and buggy down the highway, and you see the remains of the horse, those were called road apples by the the old timers. So after lots of convincing, we, uh, we got him away from Road Apple Red and turned it into, uh, called it Red Cat. Several years ago, we planted some Pinot Gris, and as it started to ripen, that block of grapes was turning red. Now in my brain, a Pinot Gris was a white wine, and therefore I was not expecting to see red grapes. So I was about ready to call the uh, person that sold us the grapes to tell him that he cheated us and that we had some red grape there. But it turns out, fortunately, somebody told me, nope, that's what Pinot Gris is. It's a reddish gray color grape that, uh, when pressed, gives you a white wine. And we get a lot of people asking about the bones here at Seneca Shore Wine Cellars. And uh, it really what happens is that uh, they come in for a good time, these people here. They're out for an afternoon or an evening sometimes, and they come and perhaps they drink a wee too bit much wine and they get carried away. You know what I'm saying there. And, and before you know it, they're frolicking in the vineyards there, and uh, they get lost. And uh, oh, several months later, we find them, uh, you know, the bones picked white clean. So he's climbing up the ladder, and he goes, do you have enough room in the tank? And I look at my meter, and I said, I sure do. There's plenty of room, trust me. Well, John gets up the top, and he just happens to look down that port when that tank reached capacity, and the juice comes squirting out, hits <laughs> him right in the face, and totally drenches him. <laughs> Of course, he reacts by trying to put his hand over the top to stop the juice from flowing out, which isn't doing any good because there's a four horsepower pump pushing juice into it. <laughs> it's spraying all over the place. I finally got the pump off. He learned not to trust me. It fascinates me how when we see people coming from the metropolitan areas or Philadelphia or Boston and they walk through the doors of the winery and they see the lake, they just, wow, this is New York. It's beautiful.